book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 1. And we'll read verse 18. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though, be, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. May the Lord add his blessing.
So in Acts 9 7, Luke said that they heard a voice, but Paul said that they that were with me saw so did the light, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Now the word for here in Revelation 1 3 is a different word for here that, was, that is used in the book of Acts. The word for here in Revelation 1 3 is actually for net in the accusative case. It means to hear with understanding. Amen? Now the word for here in Acts is aqua for net in the genitive case. It means to hear without understanding. So if you heard something and you didn't understand what was being said, it's the same as saying you did not hear. Amen? So there is no contradiction. I say that to say this. After this message today, I want us to hear with understanding. So if after you have left today and somebody should ask you, well, what did Brother B spoke about? And you could not give an answer, it means you heard a loud noise. <laughs> <laughs> and you missed the blessing. Amen? Amen. So we want to hear with understanding. It's a very simple message, but we need to understand what God is saying to us this morning. Amen? Amen. I turn your attention to the book of Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4, reading verses 10 and 11. It says, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So, John penned these words by saying uh, that the four and twenty elders said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and they were created for his pleasure. Amen? But whom did God use to create? Turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. Ephesians 3, 8 and 9 says, Paul says, Unto me who am less than least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world and the Holy God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So, John says that the four and twenty elders say that God created all things for his glory. And uh, Paul says that God created through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So Christ was the active agent in creation. John also says in, the, in, in John chapter 1 that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen? Amen. So Christ existed from the very beginning of time. Even though he lived for 33 and a half years on this earth, he was older than any one of us. Amen? Amen. Because he has no beginning and he has no ending. Amen. Now that is the mystery of godliness. Amen? Amen? Now there are two mysteries in the scriptures. The mystery of godliness and the mystery of iniquity. And God must always remain over our heads. God will always be a mystery. Amen. Because he always existed, he has been, he is, and he will always be. Amen? Amen? We cannot begin to imagine that. But that's what the Bible says. Amen? And if the Bible says it, I believe it, and that settles it. There should be no argument or discussion or debate when, when God says something. Amen? Amen? We cannot fully comprehend God. Amen. It is mind-boggling. He is, He was, He is, and He will always be. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1 says, and I will come back to these passages, and God spake all these words, saying, and then you have the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, or the Moral Law, the Law of Liberty, Amen? And reading from verse 8 says, God says, remember the Sabbath day. Now if somebody says, gives, gives you a list, or if I give a list to Mardi and I said, Mardi, this, uh, this is what I want for my job. But I want you to I put the word, I put special emphasis on an item and I said, remember. I mean, the other things are important, but this thing is, not, is of necessity. Remember. Amen? So, so God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, whenever you read a scripture, 
And it talks about this Sabbath day. It talks, it's talking about this seven day Sabbath. There were other Sabbaths, you know, ceremonial Sabbaths. There are about seven different Sabbaths. And it mentions a Sabbath. And God said, It shall be a Sabbath to you. Amen. But whenever we read about this Sabbath, it's talking about this seven day Sabbath. Amen. Are we together? Amen. 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 Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord what? Made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and he rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the Sabbath belongs to God, amen? amen. It is his, exclusively his. Um, it, it, it's not, it does not belong to the Jews. Well, it belongs to the Jews as well as everyone else, amen? amen? Because when God created Adam, Adam means mankind, and God gave him the Sabbath. Amen. And uh, so it, it, it does not belong, the Jews does not own the Sabbath. It belongs to God, and he invites us to worship him on his holy Sabbath day. Amen? Amen. Thank God for the blessing of the Sabbath. Turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 2 verses 27 and 28. Mark 2 27 and 28 says, Jesus was speaking here and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. That means that the Sabbath was designed, it was created. It was made, it was constructed for the benefit of man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath day. Among other things, he is Lord of the Sabbath day. Amen? Amen. Ezekiel 20, verses 12 and 20. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verses 12 and 20 says, and this is a very important one. You should turn in your Bibles with me. Reading, for, reading verse 12, it says, Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them that they may know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. The Sabbath is given for a what? For a sign. For example, when you look at the American flag, the American flag is not a government. The American flag is not the law, but it stands for something, amen? It stands for liberty and, and, and unity and freedom for all men, amen? You will find in this country individuals from every nation, every ethnic group in this country. And the, 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 the sign for the American flag is that it is freedom and liberty for all. You have equality. There is no place or a place upon the face of this earth that you will find the freedom and the privilege that we enjoy in this country. I came from the island, and so many of us are from different places. But we enjoy the freedom and the privilege and the equality uh, given to all men in this country. Amen. amen. That's a blessing. Amen. amen. For example, having your driver's license is not a right. Having your driver's license is a privilege that the state gives you. And they can take by the privilege whenever they want. But it's a privilege to have an ID. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's not a right. It is a privilege. So the Sabbath is a sign. And the, the, the sign is for, for a reason. The Sabbath is given for a purpose. Verse 20 says, And hallow my Sabbath, and there shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. The Sabbath is given for a sign. So, years ago, whenever you had a big games in the stadiums, you would see that an aura guard would bring out the, the American flag and the national anthem would be sung. You don't see that anymore because it be, it's being downplayed. And they may do it in the, in, the, in the stadium or the arena, but it is not on television because the media is 
is against it. So they, they're using the, the sign for people to turn against each, each other and, and, and racial discrimination and the list goes on and on. But it's not being used anymore. You see, if, if you do away with the sign and what it stands for, then the, 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 the individuals uh, have a mindset that is contrary to what the sign symbolizes. Amen? So if the Sabbath is a sign of liberty and peace and unity and harmony, and if we do away with, with the sign or the symbol that God used, then our heart is hardened. Amen? Amen. There is more to the Sabbath than, than many people think about. There is much more to the Sabbath. Now I believe that Christ is our example. Amen? Amen. Luke 4, 16 says, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and now as his custom was, he went to the synagogue or the church on this Sabbath day and stood up for the read. Amen? Yeah. Now if, if Christ came as our example, I believe it is safe to do what he did. Amen? Amen. And the way he lived, we ought to live also. Now fasten your seatbelts. Amen? <laughs> Now Satan's allegation was, I can do a good job as Christ. I'm as good as the Son. Because Jesus appeared as an angel to the angel. He is known as Michael the Archangel. Arch meaning above or over. Or in charge of. Because he is divine, he is infinite. He had to deal in linear time. And Christ was the one who made himself available and put himself to deal even with men, with, with creation in time. Because where we are concerned, we are limited, we are temporary, we have time to deal with. But where God is concerned, he is unlimited. He has no time. A thousand years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. In other words, he is going to where he has been coming from. Amen? <laughs> If you can understand that. There is nothing new to God. Everything to Him has a history. Wow. And He is unlimited. Yeah. He, is, he is eternal. eternal. Eternality is wrapped up where God is concerned. He is eternal. We are not. We are limited. We are temporary. We are... Everything in this world has a temporal existence. It does not last forever. But where God is concerned, He is eternal. Amen. And he has always been, He will always be, and He has no limits. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, we can try to imagine, for example, eternity or, or living forever without dying. In, 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 a, in a minute way, try to imagine that. But can you imagine when there was no beginning? Have you ever asked yourself the question, where did God come from? And the Bible says, God has always existed. He has no beginning and no ending. That was his mind boggling. And that's why he is God, amen? amen. Beside him, there is absolutely no other. Now, Revelation chapter 12, and reading from verse 7 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought on his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And a great dragon was cast out, that old soap and called the devil and Satan. He was cast out where? Into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, <coughs> the Bible says that, that now war started in heaven. Now stay with me. And Michael and his angels fought against a dragon, and the dragon fought on his angels, and they prevailed not. In other words, you know, in the English, it used the word, it used the word war. But there's a different word in, 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 in the Greek. I think I'm going ahead of my notes, but I'll, I'll come back to it. Now, now, whenever the Godhead came together, in Genesis chapter 1, whenever the Godhead came together, 
Satan was not, or Lucifer, as he was known in heaven, was not invited in that inner circle. Because you had God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen? Came together, and when they said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, Lucifer was not invited. Why? Because he cannot process that kind of information. He is a limited being. He is created. Not even the angel Gabriel can process. For example, when God created man, uh, in the first day he said, let there be light. The second day, let there be a firmament. The third day, let there be one. Oh, yeah. The land and seas, day number four, the sun, moon, and stars, day number five, the birds and fishes, day number six, uh, man and animals, right? So when God created <coughs> this earth, and the angels were already in existence because Job 38 and verse 7 tells us that when God created the earth, the angels or the sons of God shouted for joy. So they were already, they yeah. had already been created. Amen. Amen. But God continued in his creation. Now when, when, when he was cast out into the earth, the Bible says in Genesis 1 that the earth was without form and void. In other words, God was saying to Satan, uh, if you are equal with the sun, because he said, uh, because he was jealous of Christ, Michael, the archangel, God sent him down here to this earth. It was dark, and it was in, in this one spot in the universe. God sent him down here to see what he can do. You say you are equal with the sun, well, go ahead and create. Now, I may not be right, but when we get to heaven, uh, we'll know. Amen? I just want you to think with me. Because Isaiah 1, it says, come on, let us reason together. Amen? Amen? So God wants us to think about this, to reason. Amen? Amen? But Lucifer, there was nothing. He could not create anything. And when Christ came, when the God came together and said, let us make man, Christ said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen? Amen? So God began to create. But Lucifer, there was nothing. But he was down here. Because the Bible says he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. So he was already here when God said, let us make man. God continue in his creation. Amen? Mm -hmm. No, no. If, if, you, if you know otherwise, you can, you can show me your, where, where you get your support from. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm here to challenge your thinking. Mm -hmm. See, why did not Adam in Adam and Eve in their daily planning, why did not they invite the animals to be part of their planning? Why did not they invite the giraffe or the lion or the tiger or the bears? Because they, they cannot process, they cannot reason, they cannot think, they cannot make that decision, amen? They don't have that intelligence. So when God created man, he said, be fruitful and multiply, you know, just procreate. So only man had that intelligence to reason, to think, to make a decision. The animals could not be on that level, amen? So all of God's creation could not be on the level of the Godhead. There's a reason for this. That's why Lucifer was not invited in the inner circle, because he could not process amen. that information. Because God is divine, God is all-knowing, he's all-powerful, he, he's all-wise. Lucifer is limited. So God gave him a chance to see what he could do, and there was nothing. And yet he was jealous of the Godhead. A man ought not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, amen? Mm -hmm. Because apart from Jesus, you and I are absolutely nothing. All our righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. It's not talking about all the bad we do, it's talking about all the good we do. It's filthy rags in the sight of God. But where God is concerned, He is everything, He has everything, and He gives everything. Where we are concerned, we are nothing, we have nothing, and we give nothing. We are of all men, Paul says, most miserable. Amen. So what I'm trying to say this morning is, apart from Christ, you and I are absolutely nothing. Amen. He places value in you and I. In Jesus, we are somebody. Amen. Amen. In Christ, we are special, we are unique, we are valuable. We are of worth in the sight of God. But apart from Jesus, you and I are absolutely nothing. Because He is the light of the world. Amen? Amen. Yes.
I'll give you ask yourself a simple question. Where does the seven day a weekly cycle come from? Almost every language in the world, every ethnic group in the world today calls the seven day Sabbath. Do you think it's a coincidence? Sabbath means rest. Almost every language in the world today calls the seven day Sabbath. And some say it was originated with the, uh, with the Babylonians, but the Babylonians certainly will not call the seventh day Sabbath. Amen? Because they did not have any ties with the Jews. Yeah. And uh, if you don't believe me, you can check it out. Do your own research. Amen? Almost every language in the world today calls the seventh day Sabbath. Sabado. Spanish call it Sabado. The Italians, uh, brother, what's his name? Tiago, what do you call the Sabbath in, the, in your language? Sabado. Sabado. Similar. Means Sabbath rest, amen? Yes. And in the Haitian language? Sabbath. Sabbath. Sabbath, say buffet. Como Sabbath? You didn't know I could speak Haitian, right? To no be <laughs> I used to work with some Haitians, and he, this guy used to teach me some stuff, and uh, so I catch up with little phrases. Reading from Testimonies, Treasures, Volume 3, page 20, it reads, All through the week we had to have the Sabbath in mind, and in making preparation to keep it according to the commandment. We are not merely to observe the Sabbath as a legal matter. We are to understand its spiritual bearing upon all the transactions of life. All who regard the Sabbath is sign between them and God, showing that He is the God who sanctifies them. So the Sabbath is given for a reason, and that reason is for us to be sanctified will represent the principles of his government. They will bring into daily practice the laws of his kingdom. Then it will be their prayer that the sanctification of the Sabbath may rest upon them. Every day they will have the companionship of Christ and will exemplify the, the perfection of his character. Every day their light will shine forth to others in good works. The Sabbath is given for sanctification. For example, let's suppose that we that we live a questionable life. Like that we are wild parties and we, we live, you know, not in harmony with God's word. Can we can by can we by that living lessen the holiness of the Sabbath? No. no. Or let's say that we are very conservative and we, we live according to the scriptures and we do good deeds. Can we make the Sabbath more holy by our living? No. no. So if we cannot add or take away from the Sabbath, then we are doing nothing to the day that the day, according to Jesus, is made for us. That there is something for us to benefit from the Sabbath. Amen? If we cannot add to the Sabbath to its holiness or take away from its sanctification, uh, then it means that according to Jesus, the Sabbath was made for man. Amen. We must get the benefit or the blessing of the Sabbath day. It is, it is less of self and more of self being controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that do you know that Adam and Eve did not need the Holy Spirit to make their decisions? Because they were perfect. God could make perfect sinless beings, but God cannot create a perfect character. Mm -hmm. Character must be developed. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so that the, sun, the Sabbath is given for our development. For, so that we can develop perfect characters. We, God cannot create perfect characters. He can create perfect sinless beings, but it, their characters must be developed. Are you getting what I'm trying to 
To bring a cross? Yes. Amen. Review and Herald, August 30th, 1898. Every person has been placed on trial as were Adam and Eve. As the tree of knowledge was placed in the midst of the garden of Eden, so the Sabbath commandment is placed in the midst of the Decalogue, the very center of the Decalogue. In regard to the fruit of the tree of knowledge, the restriction was made. You shall not eat of it, lest he die. Of the Sabbath, God said, it shall not we shall not defile it. But keep it holy, as the tree of knowledge was the test of Adam's obedience, so the fourth commandment is the test that God has given to prove the loyalty of all his people. The experience of Adam is to be a warning to us, so long as time shall last. Amen. It warns us not to receive any assurance from the mouths of mortals or of angels that will detract or jot that will detract one jot or two from the sacred laws of Jehovah. In other words, just as the tree was placed in the Garden of Eden, next to the tree of life, God said you shall not eat of it. The tree did not give life. You understand what I'm saying? Even the fruit from the tree of life did not give life. Life comes from God. Amen. But the tree, by partaking of the tree, it perpetuated life. Amen? Mm. So by keeping the Sabbath does not make us more holy. Amen? It's given for a reason. Just as the life that did not come from the tree, the life came from God. But in obedience to what God said, if Adam and Eve had remained obedient, they would have continued to live forever. Amen? Yes. There, it was a condition on their obedience. And there was something that God didn't want them to know. Amen? Amen. Now, let me say this. Many of us may know about famous people. We may read a biography about a famous individual or even an autobiography about that person. Does that mean we know that person? No, it simply means we know about that person. There are many theologians who have letters behind their names. They know about God. They have written books about God, but that doesn't mean that, that they know God. Amen? There's a big difference. Amen. Knowing about an individual or knowing about God is different from knowing who He is. And Christ prayed that they may know me. Amen? Christ prayed that we may know Him as He knows the Father. Amen? Now, now that's a whole new other level of understanding. Amen? Can you imagine when God created Adam and Adam said that's a giraffe or that's a rhinoceros or that's a cow or that's a sheep or that's a goat. That was the name that God intended the animal should have. So his mindset, his very thought pattern or pattern after the thoughts of God. And, and God did not tell him that should be a cow or that should be a giraffe. He named the animals. But that was the name that God intended the animal should have. Amen. So can you imagine his thoughts were after the thoughts of God himself. Amen. And this is what Christ is saying. So, so whenever Jesus did anything, this is exactly what the Father would do. Amen. Amen. And then you might say, when Christ got up every morning, he got up with plans. But he submitted his will to the Father's will. Amen. And even in going to the cross, he said to the Father, is there any other way? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen? Amen. He submitted himself, he humbled himself to the will of the Father. And we should be striving to reach that level, that point. Amen? Amen. It's a daily commitment, it's a daily surrender. You see, faith is not something that happens overnight. It's not a leap. It's a daily walking with God. Amen? Amen. 
Enoch was so close to God that God just took him to be with him. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says that he walked with the Lord. Not just walk in his words, in his thoughts, in his actions, in his demeanor, in his expression. Everything he did was God-like. And God loved him so much that God couldn't be apart from him. Amen. Amen. So God took him to be with him. So when God has a people that walk and talk like Jesus, then he, he will take us to be with him where he is. Amen. Yes. So the answer, friend of mine, is in your hands. The Sabbath was made, it was built, it was constructed, it was designed, it was created. Paul says, he used the word, there was war in heaven. The Greek word is polemic, polemo, and we get the word polemic from polemo. Polemic is simply an argument. From the word polemic, we get the word politics. So you, you all understand where it came from. Politics is simply an argument. People who talk a lot can make a good argument. You can be a good attorney or you can be a good politician. That's basically all they do. They just talk. No. Who can have the best argument? Or if you, if you, if you can pay the, the most money for the best lawyer, they can argue your case. Amen? Something I don't understand is that how come the two attorneys went to the same school, studied the same same subjects, get the same degree, and argue against each other. And they learn the same thing, amen? If you have the most money, or you, the one who is more influential, who, who can make a better argument. So in heaven now, there was a polemic, which is simply an argument. But this argument was with lies against truth. Yeah. God can only be true, amen? God can never lie. He can never be, make a mistake, amen? amen? All God can do is use truth, and that's why Paul says, we don't wage war as the world does. The weapons we use are not worldly. They are divine. They are power to demolish every stronghold, every pretense, every argument that sets up itself against the knowledge of God. So Paul says we don't wage war as the world, but it's an argument. And the devil still is deceiving the entire world today. But there is an argument because Christ is truth. He is life. He came out of his own and his own received him not. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. People are not lost because they are in darkness. People are lost because they refuse the light. Amen. Christ is the light. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. Amen. Amen. You know, I discovered that the claims that Christ made no other religious leader upon the face of this earth ever made. Christ was very bold. He was a revolutionist. Amen? Amen. He said, I am the way. Definite article. Amen? The truth and the life. In other words, he was simply saying, apart from me, there is absolutely no other way, no other truth, no other life. Amen? He is the way exclusively. Christ accepted worship. He forgives sins. Amen. He said, I sins are forgiven. He said, me and my father are one. Can you name any individual who ever made such claims? Mm. No other individual but Christ alone. Amen. Amen. So we are not a shy away from the truth. We are not a shy away from Christ, friend of mine. He is all that he claims to be. Amen. Amen. So it's an argument about truth and error. Psalm 89 verse 34 says, My covenant will I not break, neither will I alter the things that is gone out of my mouth. And that word is A-L-T-E-R, not A-L-T-A-R, like the altar in the church. That means I will not change the things that is gone out of my mouth. Amen. That's what God is saying, Malachi 3, 6. I am the Lord, I change not. In other words, what I'm trying to say, in order for something to be blessed, only God can bless something, amen? And when God blesses something, it is well blessed. We cannot transfer the blessing or take away the blessing from it, amen? Mm. 
Malachi 3 6, I am the Lord and change not. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 14 and 15, I know whatsoever God do it, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God do it that man should fear before him. Verse 15, that which had been is now, and that which is to be had already been. And God required that which is past. First Chronicles 17:27. For thou blessest, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Amen? amen. So we serve an, an old-time God, amen? amen? He does not change. And by the way, friend of mine, what was true yesterday is true today and will be true tomorrow. Truth does not change over time, amen? Mm -hmm. Truth stands forever. And the truth can stand up to scrutiny, amen? amen. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 24 and verse 20, But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. He spoke those words 40 years in advance. Jerusalem was destroyed in 1870. And when Christ spoke those words, Jerusalem and the temple were still in existence. It took 46 years in building the temple. And when Christ said to them, see these massive stones, not one stone will be left upon another. The time is coming, so Christ was speaking in advance, amen? And the disciples said they couldn't believe it because the walls were glazed with gold. And, and imported from Rome. And not one Christian lost their lives when the army surrounded Jerusalem. Because there was a time, there was a sign for them to leave, amen? And uh, historians tell us they left in October on a Wednesday, not on a Saturday, amen? I don't know how they know these things to the very detail, but I discovered that. If every timekeeping device is lost, every clock, every, every watch is lost, do you know that the scientists, the astronomers can pinpoint the exact time and a very second to the very minute detail with all those instruments? We live in an, an, an intelligent age, even today, amen? God says he is with us moment by moment. Do you know how long is a moment? <laughs> if you can divide a second into a thousand parts, one second into a thousand parts, a moment is 53% of that. <laughs> so God, I don't know how they do the calculation, but that's what they said. So when God says, I'm with you moment by moment, that's, that's less than a second, amen? Wow. God is always with us. If God should, should withdraw his hand, from his creation, for one second, everything will be in confusion. Amen. God holds the world in the palm of his hands, amen. amen. He's conscious. He can be in every place at the same time, amen. He knows every blade of grass. Then he knows how much hair you got in your head, amen. And not, not, only that how, not only that he knows how much, he knows which number it is, amen? So when you comb your hair, ladies, and you brush your hair, and some hair comes off, God knows which number that is, amen? Now, men have tried to count the, the amount of years. I forgot the number they came up with. But it's almost impossible. But God says he knows everything. Amen. There's nothing that God do not know, amen? amen. Oh, I take back that. There are some things that he, do, he does not know. He does not know a sin that he would not forgive. Amen. He does not know a sin that he does not love. And he does not know a better time than now, amen? amen. That's why Christ says, now is the time. Amen. If you hear my voice today, harden not your hearts, amen? amen? Today is the right time. Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Christ says, Think not that I have come to destroy the Lord of prophets, I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, 
one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Lord, the Lord be fulfilled. A jot or a tittle is the dotting of an eye or the crossing of a T. Now listen to the statement, Conflict and Courage, page 13. The tree of knowledge which stood near the tree of life in the midst of the garden was to be a test of the obedience, faith, and love of our first parents. While permitted to eat freely from every other tree, they were forbidden to taste of this on pain of death. So the source of life was not in the tree. The source of life came from God. They ought to be exposed to the temptations of Satan, but if they endure the trial, they will finally be placed beyond his power to enjoy perpetual favor with God. They had the power without the aid of the Holy Spirit. Because they were perfect, they were sinless, but they were not mature. Amen. They had not developed a righteous character. Amen. Character, character must be developed. And God cannot create a righteous character. So the Sabbath is given for, for our development, for our sanctification, friend of mine. So if you live up north, I used to walk up north, and folks would go skiing on the Sabbath, and they would go play golf, and some folks would go uh, scuba diving or whatever. We are not to find our doing our own pleasure on his holy day, friend of mine. Yeah. We are to find pleasure in the Sabbath. If the Sabbath is not a delight, if it's not a pleasure, if you don't look forward to the Sabbath, then we are not keeping the Sabbath. Amen. It should be a joy Amen. to keep the Sabbath day. We should we should find pleasure in God's holy Sabbath day. Amen. If it's a drudgery, if it's if it's a dislike or oh, we keep the Sabbath because of different reasons, but then we have a problem. We need to be in church for the right reason, amen? amen. Because God is to be worshipped, and He said, Forsake not the assembly of ourselves together, amen? amen? And because He is God, there is no debate or discussion to what God says, amen? amen? God might have created man without the power to transgress His law, He might have withheld the hand of Adam from touching the forbidden fruit. But in that case, man would have been not a free moral agent, but a mere automation. It simply means a robot. Without freedom of choice, his obedience will not have been voluntary, but forced. For example, if you live in Israel, or you go to Mount Sinai Hospital, the Jewish hospitals, the elevator stops on every floor. It's sad because according to the Jews, you can't try to switch because that's an electrical spark and you have to light the fire on a summer day. So in order to cause it, to avoid electrical spark, they can ride the elevator and stop on every floor. But that is no development of character, amen? There is no, there is no, there is nothing in that. What I'm trying to say, friend of mine, God loves us, amen? amen. And Christ says, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. His commandments are not grievous. It's for our own good, amen? Our benefit and our blessing, amen? Yes. So let's re-examine how we worship on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Some folks come to church, and I don't want to meddle, but that's between you and the Lord, amen? amen? For two hours, and then we go back home and we never see each other again until the next Sabbath. <laughs> you know, where are you in the evening? We have some beautiful Vespa programs, amen? And the 24 hours belongs to God, amen? If we cannot give God a couple of hours on the Sabbath, and the angels in heaven cry, holy, 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 at his throne. Do you think we're going to be happy in heaven? Heaven will be a place for people who will be happy there, amen? amen. All men can be saved, but all will not be saved because all do not choose life, amen? amen. 
Amen. The Sabbath is much more than we think it is. It's given to us. If everybody keep the Sabbath day, there will be no atheists. There will be no agnostic. There will be no infidels. Amen. Because it tells us, do you know the, the single longest quotation of any Old Testament passage in the New Testament is the Sabbath in Revelation 14, reading from verse 6. The single longest quotation of any Old Testament passage is the Sabbath. You want to look at it? Revelation 14, this will be our final passage. The third angel's message. Reading from verse 6, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with the Lord voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of a judgment is come. And worship him, hear this, that made heaven and earth the sea and the fountains of all. Amen. The single longest quotation from any Old Testament passage is this fourth commandment. Amen. 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 And, and God places special emphasis on this. He says, worship him who made heaven. A direct quote from the fourth commandment. Amen. Friend of man, God means exactly what he says. Amen. Amen. We need to delight ourselves in the Sabbath. Not finding pleasure, doing our own things, or having our own way. I used to live in Miami, as I said to you, in uh, Cutler Ridge. And when I would go to the prison, I would be coming back. I would see this guy cutting his lawn on a Sabbath. I knew he was a deacon in the sister church because I had been to that church. And I knew I saw him picking up the offering one day. But he would be cutting the lawn on a Sabbath evening when I'm coming from the prison. The next week I saw him cut in the Lord again, so I decided maybe he does not know. Maybe I need to, you know, find out what's going on. So one day, one Sunday morning when I was going to walk to walk, I stopped at his house and I said that. But I saw and so I saw you cutting your lawn on a Sabbath. I said, Do your neighbors know who you are and what you believe? Obviously not. He said, well, I was not ready to become a deacon in the church, and I told the pastor that I'm not ready. I said, that has nothing to do with the pastor. This has to do with you and the Lord. Amen? <laughs> I said, um, how, how, how is it with your relationship with the Lord and your, your neighbors? Obviously, they, they, they don't know that you're a Seventh-day Adventist because you're not representing Christ. He said, well, I'm busy during the week. And Sundays is to visit relatives and friends, but the only time I have is after I come from worship on the Sabbath. I cut my lawn. Friend of mine, we need to do better than that. Amen? Amen. In the time of ignorance, God waits. Amen? Amen. But when we know, it's a whole new ball game. Amen? Amen? I don't care what you do. It's between you and the Lord. Amen? I'm just here to remind us that God means exactly what He says. Amen? Amen. God is very particular in what he says, amen? amen? When he says, you shall not, he means don't, amen? amen? When he says, do, you shall do, amen? It's not a play of words. These stories in, the, in God's word are here for a reason, amen? amen? Because Jacob did not trust the wrong individual. I mean, imagine if he had gone to the university to get his degree on, on uh, farming or food management or, you know, some other stuff, but he placed his trust in the Lord. So whatever happens, whatever transpired in his life, God was leading him, amen? amen? Some of us may lose our job because we keep the Sabbath. Have anyone ever lost a job and it was a blessing? No one? When I'm married, I had to walk away from a job one day and it was a blessing, you know? If we don't stand up for something, we'll fall for anything, friend of mine. Amen? Amen. God is looking for individuals who will stand up and be counted. Amen? It's time to shine for the Lord. Amen? Amen. And not to shy away from the truth. And for those of you who are not seven day Adventists, and this might be new to some of us, um, it is what the scripture says. Amen? Amen? And if you want some studies on it, I'll be glad to give you some studies on it. Amen? Amen. God loves us. And Jesus is coming again. Amen. What a day of rejoicing that will be. The Sabbath will be to us. It should be a delight. Amen. Amen.
we should delight ourselves in the Lord. Let us stand as we sing our closing hymn. Hymn number 329.